Kevin's Kitchen is sponsored by Raycon. Go to buyraycon.com slash defunctland to save 15% today. What's better than the smell of delicious food on a warm summer day? In this modern American kitchen is where we find our subject. This is Kevin. Kevin is a documentarian. A documentarian captures life and constructs stories about important topics such as injustice, crime, and roller coasters. He does not show his face, but he will show his hands. If we look closely at Kevin's hands, we can see that he is not just a documentarian, but he is also a baker. Like bed sheets from a roadside motel, Kevin's hands are splattered with the hauntings of years of mistakes. This mark was when Kevin burned his finger attempting to remove a hot tray of cookies from his oven. This mark is from when Kevin overreacted to burning his finger on the oven, dropped the hot tray of cookies, and instinctively went to catch the tray with his bare hand. Needless to say, Kevin has years of experience in the kitchen. And today, for the first time, he will combine his passions and embark on a historical culinary adventure. Today, Kevin is going to learn the history of and concoct his own sandwich. Wait a sec, you read that wrong. Sorry? You read it wrong, do it one more time. Okay, today, Kevin is going to learn the history of and concoct his own handwich. What is a handwich? I'll show you. Around 1986, a new food item debuted in Walt Disney World, named the Handwich. The Handwich was shaped like an ice cream cone, but instead of a waffle cone, it featured a cone-shaped sub-roll, and instead of ice cream, it had fillings. These included such delicacies as ham and cheese, pulled barbecue chicken, roast beef and cheddar, and even tuna salad. The Handwich was billed as the sandwich of the future. Because of this, the handwich was sold at Epcot's The Land Pavilion's Farmer's Market Food Court, as well as the Space Bar in Tomorrowland. It was also served in Adventureland at some point. Wherever it was, it was billed as Disney's newest attraction, implying that you can ride the handwich, when in reality, the handwich rides you. The official poster for the handwich boasted that it was not just futuristic, but revolutionary. The, quote, first sandwich you can hold in one hand. The poster also stated that it was Disney-licious and that those that consumed it were playing a part in the history of baking. Despite the heavy marketing effort, the handwich was discontinued sometime in the mid-90s, leaving behind more questions than answers. Luckily, those questions would linger, and the good people at Retro WDW would re-spark interest in the handwich during their Retro Magic event in 2019. Here, historian Brian Miles gave a keynote speech on the handwich, which was coded somewhat like a military briefing. Miles conducted an interview with former Imagineer Peggy Ferris, who had the inside scoop on the handwich, and you'll never guess who was responsible for its creation. Back at Imagineering, Michael Eisner challenged us to think about fun food. So that was the big idea. In a surprising twist, Eisner pushed for fun food in part because when he was a young man, he visited the 1964 New York World's Fair at which Disney famously contributed four groundbreaking attractions. While there, a young Eisner tried some of the fair's unique food offerings, including Belgium waffles. Over two decades later, Eisner was the CEO of the Walt Disney Company, and he challenged the company's Imagineers to concoct a unique culinary creation for the Disney parks. During a day-long brainstorming session, Imagineers and food operations specialists designed dozens of dishes, but one stood out from the fray, a cone-shaped sandwich named the Castle Cone. The original fillings included mushu shrimp and mixed berries. Eisner approved the idea, and the castle cone was born. However, the name was changed by the Walt Disney World marketing team, and it was officially released as the Handwich sometime around 1986, with more consumer and operations-friendly fillings. Keith, I've been dying to know, what is a Handwich? It's a sub kind of roll, so that you can stuff the meats inside and eat it actually like a cone. As aforementioned, the handwich was filled with ham and cheese, 
pulled barbecue chicken, roast beef and cheddar, and tuna salad. But these were just a few of the variations. There was also chicken salad, ambrosia salad, seafood salad, and taco beef. When Disney MGM Studios opened in 1989, a unique sandwich was created for the park with a Cobb salad filling. Unfortunately, the sandwich was not the success that Eisner had hoped for. In 1990, the Orlando Sentinel reported that, quote, the last we checked, the sandwich had not exactly gripped the imagination of a hungry America, let alone Orlando, let alone anyone but Michael Eisner. Retro WDW's Retro Magic event was held at the Ballroom of the Americas at the Contemporary Resort, and immediately after Brian's presentation, attendees were treated to a lunch of the future of the past with a Handwich buffet. This would not be the only reappearance of the Handwich after its discontinuation in the mid-90s. In 2012, Cars Land opened at Disney California Adventure Theme Park, and the Cozy Cone Motel Quick Service Spot served Handwich-style bread cones, although they were not officially Handwiches. Flavors included chicken verde and chili cone queso, and for breakfast, bacon scramble. In 2013, Disney's Hollywood Studios Min and Bill's Dockside Diner quick service stand served their own sandwich cones, but these were quickly discontinued. In 2014, another sandwich cone could be found, again at Disney's Hollywood Studios. This time, fillings included a macaroni and cheese with bacon topping cone and a Fiesta chili cheese cone. In 2017, during Epcot's 35th anniversary celebration, a retro sandwich was created this time with a new mac and cheese with cheeseburger filling. While distinct from the original Handwich, this was the most intentional of the Handwich revivals, explicitly referencing the dish's predecessor. All of this is to say, the Handwich is replicable, which means... Kevin, wait! You're not really going to recreate one of the Handwiches, are you? No, announcer man. I'm going to recreate three of the Handwiches. Three Handwiches? That is a journey from which you cannot return unsuccessful. Come up just one handwich short, and you will be lost to time. Just like the handwich itself. Are you sure about this? It'll be fine. Now let's make some handwiches. Mouth-watering meals. Delectable dishes. Tasty treats. No matter how scrumptious, they like everything will be lost to time. But unlike most of us, some will be remembered. And unlike all of us, some will be resurrected. This is Defunct Pan, with the dishes of the past return to the plate. And now your host, Kevin Perjurer, will show us how to create an old-fashioned handwich. It's true. The sandwich of the future of the past is of the present once again. Because today, we will be creating an old-fashioned barbecue chicken handwich. Let's start with our delicious slow-cooked barbecue chicken. First, we make our sauce with a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, followed by a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, a fourth cup of brown sugar, and a tablespoon of olive oil. I have peeled and grated an onion, and we are going to put both the onion and the juice into our bowl. Finally, let's add two cups of barbecue sauce. The only barbecue sauce you will ever need, and the best barbecue sauce in the world, is Joe's Kansas City Barbecue Sauce. I'm going to add the whole bottle to our bowl. And now we mix. Next, we place three pounds of chicken breast into our slow cooker. After we wash our hands, we season. This quick spice mix that I created contains salt, pepper, paprika, cayenne pepper, and garlic powder. We can now pour our sauce over our seasoned chicken, and once again we mix. Let's place the lid on our slow cooker and cook on low heat for 7 hours or high heat for 4 hours. About 2 hours before our chicken is done cooking, we can begin making our sandwich cones. Start by warming up a cup of milk in the microwave until warm, but not hot. We can then add a teaspoon of sugar, then 7 ounces of active dry yeast, and yet again, we mix. We're going to allow our yeast to activate to the side for around 5-10 to 10 minutes. In the meantime, we will create our flour mixture. In this bowl, we have four cups of all-purpose flour, and we are going to add in three tablespoons of castor sugar and two teaspoons of salt, and then we mix. We're going to make a well in the center of our mixture. Inside, we will place two eggs and our activated yeast mixture. We can now take a hand mixer, and we mix with a dough hook. After these are combined, we take a fourth cup of soft or slightly melted butter and add it to our dough. We now mix for around 6 to 7 minutes. We now place our somewhat sticky dough onto a floured surface to form it into a ball. 
Once we have done this, we can place it into a greased bowl, cover it completely, and allow it to sit in a slightly warm spot for one hour to rise. While that is rising, we can create our cone molds. We will be using printer paper and tin foil to create these. These will be going in the oven, but do not worry, the paper will not catch fire. There's actually a great book about this, which states the auto-ignition point of paper right in its title. It is called 1984. We will only be baking at 400 degrees, so we are well under this mark. First, we take two pieces of printer paper and we lay them landscape in front of us. We take the bottom left corner and create a small fold-in like this. That right there is about right. We can now use this fold to roll our cone, making sure to keep the point at the bottom as tight as possible. We continue to hold that together as we place a piece of tinfoil on our workspace. Start at one of the corners and wrap your cone in the tinfoil. Do not worry about this excess, because we are going to just fold that into the top of our cone. And there you have it. We will have enough dough for eight sandwiches, but I will only be baking two, one for me and one for you. So once we have finished with our cone molds, we can place them to the side. Once our dough has risen, now comes the fun part. We're going to divide our dough into eight equal pieces and cover again with our plastic to prevent any of them from drying out. One by one, we are going to take one of these pieces and roll it out. We want to end up with a long tube, around three feet long. Once we have this, we can take one of our molds and starting from the bottom, spiral our dough up the cone. Now that's looking like a hand witch. Once we've done this, we gently press our dough into the cone and pinch the tip. We now place these on a greased baking sheet. As our oven preheats to 400 degrees, we are going to give our handwich cones a light egg wash. Once our cones are prepared, we can place them in our oven for around 12 minutes. While those are cooking, our chicken should be just about done. That smells absolutely delicious. With two forks, we shred the chicken, and as we do this, we mix. We're going to drain only the chicken we will be filling, as we don't want our sandwiches to be too soggy. Once we pull our cones out of the oven and allow them to cool, we can remove the mold and admire our work. Now, we take our chicken and fill our sandwich cones. And voila, a beautiful barbecue chicken sandwich. I must now take a bite. Mmm, mmm, absolutely wonderful. I could eat the whole thing, but I'm gonna save my appetite because we have two more sandwiches to make. Kevin, wait! There's still time to turn back. Just one is enough. If anything goes wrong and you don't complete all three, you could get stuck in historical limbo. Nothing can stop me from making more sandwiches. Onward. What's cooking, America? Let's find out in Defunct Kitchen. And now, welcome your host, Kevin Perjurer! Hey everyone, my name is Kevin Perjurer and I make defunct meals. Today we are going to be making something from long ago, it's an old Disney Parks favorite, you might have guessed it already, it is the Handwich. This one is actually a viewer submission, so let's hear from Scott. Hi Kevin, I went to the studio catering company at Disney MGM Studios in May 1989. Here, I tried the Cobb Salad Handwich for $3.60. It had a mix of finely chopped lettuce, egg, bacon, tomato, turkey, avocado, and blue cheese in a French roll cone. The blue cheese dominated just a bit, which didn't bother me. But if you don't like the pungent taste of Roquefort, you might not like this. I was wondering if you could show me how to make it. Scott, thank you so much for writing in. The Handwich is not only a forgotten food item, it is the perfect meal for many occasions. Let's say you have a daughter. She's a sweetheart, but she's a bit of an arsonist. Her principal is coming over to discuss her expulsion and you have to cook something spectacular or he will expel your daughter and she will never be able to achieve the dreams that you've projected onto her. With these life-altering steaks, why not make a delicious sandwich? And I'll show you how. We're going to start with four strips of bacon chopped up, and we're gonna place these on a wire rack, and we're gonna rest that on top of a drip pan lined with tin foil. Once you have those on the wire rack, you can place it in a 400 degree oven for around 20 minutes, but make sure to watch it. After you've washed your hands, we can open our dough. Now I'm gonna take advantage of the store for this one. This is French bread dough, and we're just gonna give it a little karate chop, hi-ya. 
And now we're just gonna open it up and we're gonna split it in half, just like that, into two equal parts for our two hand witch cones. Now we're gonna wrap these around one of these cones. Now what this is, it's just printer paper wrapped in tin foil. Now we have a tutorial on our website and you can just go to that link right there. And once you made two of these, we can get rolling. So let's grab one of our dough and just like we're starting a campfire, we just go to town. We wanna to make this around three feet long. And once we've done that, you can take your tin foil cone and you just wrap it around the very tip and then you spiral it on. You just keep wrapping all the way to the top, just like that. Look at that. Now we take our greased baking sheet and we put our hand witch on. And we do this again with our second hand witch. And once we've got that, we can put that one on right next to it. And we can put this in our oven 400 degrees, even while the bacon is cooking just right under there. Now, while we got that cooking, I wanna tell you about an incredible product. These are the Raycon Everyday E25 earbuds, and they're today's sponsor. These earbuds are the real deal. The Bluetooth pairing is seamless, it's incredibly responsive, and with six hours of playtime, you can do everything from commute to work to exercise on a single charge. Now, I love to wear these while I'm in the kitchen because they fit perfectly in my ear and never fall out into my batter, so I'm always focused on my music and my cooking. I can even dance with these while baking and they don't fall out. And the bass on these things is great. Here's the best part. This charging case is so compact, they can comfortably slide right into my pocket. Now for our viewers, if you go to buyraycon.com slash defunctland or click the link in the description now, you will get 15% off your order. That's buyraycon.com slash defunctland to save 15%. Now I'm getting so invested in this music, I almost forgot that I got stuff in the oven. I gotta go check on it. Now take a look at this crispy bacon. It is beautiful and ready for our salad. Give me some for the bacon, oh yeah. We're now gonna make our dressing. We're gonna start with a third cup of red wine vinegar, and then we're gonna add two thirds of extra virgin olive oil, a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, and of course, salt and pepper. Close that up, and now we mix. All right, please stop clapping. It freaks me out when I'm using the knife. God, I'm tired. Okay, so we're gonna take our lettuce and put it into a salad spinner, and you will never guess what that does, but I bet you'll clap anyways. <laughs> All right, let's try to keep it at a mezzo forte. Kevin's got a headache. Let's go ahead and speed run this salad. Bacon, cherry tomatoes, Roquefort, egg. Doesn't matter how you slice it, it'll still taste terrible. I'm gonna open up an avocado and take out its pit. Boom, magic, it disappeared, no idea where that went. Slice up some turkey I got from the deli. And don't forget to throw a little piece of turkey over your shoulder for good luck. And we mix. And look what just came out of the oven. One of them's a little messed up, but that doesn't matter. We're gonna keep on trucking. Let's go ahead and add our dressing to our salad and then fill these cones. Now I cannot wait to try this, so I'm not gonna. Let's take a bite. Mmm, that is delicious. That's two beautiful hand witch cones, and you know what this pairs great with? Raycon Everyday E25 earbuds. I know that these might have looked complicated, but do not be afraid of these. The hand witches can smell fear, and if they smell it, they will become spicier. And check this out, we did that in under five TV minutes, which is roughly 13 hours. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Now I've gotta go make another hand witch, or I might be lost to... That's not good. Ow. Oh. Where am I? Mr. Announcer Man? Hello? Studio audience? Anyone? Here we go. What? Wait a sec. I know what this is. Limbo. I've got to make that third handwich. Oh, I've got to find a kitchen. Fridge, yes! Empty, no! I cannot be stuck here forever. There's got to be something around here somewhere. Come on! Oh no. Wait. Keys. I've got it. 
Just one more. That's all I need. I told you, Kevin. You must create all three, or you will be lost to time. I will, announcer man. I promise. The hand which was meant to die, let it stay dead. I have to bring it back once more. Three <laughs> hand witches? That's impossible. You'll never do it. I guess everyone was right when they called you two hand witch, Kevin. I never believed in you. I'm gonna prove you all wrong. I just need one more hand witch. Kevin, take my hand. Take my hand witch. Biscuits? I'm so glad! Thank you for choosing Arby's. Place your order when ready. Could I get three beef and cheddar sandwiches without the buns? So if you don't want it on the bun, you just put it in a bowl? Yeah. So I've got three beef and cheddar classes all in the same bowl with the cheese and the sauce in the bowl as well. That's right. And some mozzarella sticks, please. Sure, you want four or six? Six. What is a hand witch? Hand witch. What is a hand witch? Hand witch. 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 Not, that was the best one. Kevin, you did it! You made all three sandwiches. You can come back now. Kevin? Kevin? Kevin!